world. My name is Jan Nicolaus Kind, and I'm talking to you from Brasilia, the capital of beautiful Brazil. In order to model our future, we need to know where we are. And in order to know where we are, we need to know where we are from, right? Now, that's why we have libraries, museums, and archives. And about the archives, I want to talk to you today about. The Tears Olga Society IDR has the very fortunate situation to have a wonderful archives. Nowadays, it is called the Surendra Naryam Archives. Many people in the past have contributed to it. Say, Jean Riedase, for example, or Catherine Beachy, who we all know of her wonderful booklet, Daily Meditations. But also in later days, uh, the current director of the School of the Wisdom and the European School of Theosophy, Erika Georgiades, has worked in it, and I. I also have worked in the ADR archives, which was a great honor. Now, Today, we are going to celebrate something. And in order to, uh, you know, make that celebration a wonderful thing, I want to introduce you to the custodian of the ADR archives, who happens to be also the international president of the Theosophical Society. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, Mr. Tim Boyd. Well, hello, friends. I'd like to welcome you to this uh, celebration uh, and remembrance of our archives. Celebration of 100 years in existence. Although we're a little bit early with it, it was actually officially founded in uh, February on uh, Foundation Day, February 17th of, 20, of 1922. We thought during the course of this convention it would be well to share uh, a retrospective about this uh, archives while we're all here together. Uh, the Theosophical Society, as all of us are aware, has a very rich history. It was founded in 1875. So we're 146 years into this experiment that was uh, initiated that we have called the Theosophical Society. Certainly in its early days, there was little thought about an archives. Uh, in its early days, our founders and the early people within the Theosophical Society were really just strictly working to try and see if there was a place in the world for this experiment, for this Theosophical work, for this Theosophical Society. Their focus was strictly on the present moment. And so, as things progressed, uh, 47 years later, in 1922, uh, the Theosophical Society, it became clear that the TS was here to stay. At that point, there was the very uh, industrious uh, young person. At that time, he was a young person. Later on, he became the president, the international president of the Theosophical Society, but uh, C. Jinaraja Dasa, who had been exploring and excavating within all the various uh, collected items that the Theosophical Society at that time had. Previously, uh, before it was formalized as an archives, previously there were just many, many unexplored boxes from people, letters, uh, articles, uh, objects that had been collected over that time. By 1922, it was clear that this was a movement with a history. Over the course of the years, although the archives has always been located on the Adyar campus, over the course of the years, it has shifted from various places within that campus. Uh, in 2019, we completed a new space uh, specifically designed for the archives, uh, specifically designed for the archives as it exists today and with a view for its future as far as we are able to see. So 
all of the sorts of things related to a modern uh, functional archives we put into place. Temperature control, uh, humidity control, all sorts of uh, aspects for a functional uh, archives were considered and we have a beautiful home for that archives now. So the archives is more than just a repository for Theosophical Society memorabilia. With the growing recognition within the academic world of the Theosophicals, the Theosophical Society's uh, influence and role in the growth and development of modern art, of uh, contemporary spirituality, of global culture. These are, there are threads of the Theosophical's influence that are being traced all around the world. The archives today have become not just something we can look upon proudly to view and study the Theosophical Society's history, but it has become a resource to academics, uh, people seeking out degrees of various type authors all around the world. So it's something that we can really uh, be proud of, this particular treasure that we have, and that now is, as it has been over the years, it is so well uh, tended and shared. So we're thankful for the hundred years that this uh, archives has officially been in existence and we look forward to the next 100 years. Thank you, Tim Boyd, for the commemorative address. Next, Ms. Chase Rikkanen who is the head of the Surendra Narayan Archives, will present us views of the rich history of the archives at Adia. I take great pleasure in sharing with all of you the fascinating story of the Adyar Archives, a veritable treasure trove, showcasing the history of the Theosophical Society since its inception in New York on 17th November 1875. The Adyar Archives, which was formally started on 17th February 1922, was renamed as the Surendra Narayan Archives in January 2019. What is an archive? An archive may be defined as a place containing a collection of records, documents, and other materials of historical interest. This may seem boring and dull if you think of it simply as a collection of musty old files and papers. The Adair Archives, however, is much more than a mere collection of papers and documents. It takes us on a voyage of discovery into the fascinating world of a bygone era. It weaves a spell of enchantment over all who delve into its mysterious, fathomless depths as little known but inspiring stories about the founders and many early theosophists and other memorable incidents come to light. It reveals the truly inspiring saga of the tremendous toil and sweat hardships and difficulties, as also the undying devotion and commitment of the early theosophists who made great personal sacrifices to serve the masters of the wisdom and bring the light of theosophy to the world. Since the early days of the society, both Madame Blavatsky and Colonel Alcott had a grand vision for the archives and were great collectors of historical artifacts. Colonel Alcott maintained a diary where he recorded day-to-day -day events, including notes on his extensive travels. 
This was later published as Old Diary Leaves in six volumes. Madame Blavatsky maintained voluminous scrapbooks, 32 in number. These included press reports on a wide variety of subjects of interest to her, which were painstakingly cut out and pasted onto the scrapbooks, often with doodles and astringent comments written by hand on the margin. All the international presidents have been custodians of the archives, and this practice continues till today. The fourth president of the TS, Mr. C. Jinaraj Dasa, was in particular was a prolific collector and a great curator. The Adair Archives celebrates its 100th birthday in the year 2022. The year 2022 also marks the centenary of the first celebration of Adair Day on 17th February 1922 at the suggestion of Madame de Manziarli, which was later endorsed by Dr. Besant. In addition, to remembering and revering Adyar, this day was also intended to collect donations to support the work of the president at the international headquarters. Let us look at what Dr. Besant had to say about the first ever Adyar Day celebration and the starting of the archives on 17th February 1922. About the Adyar Day celebration, Dr. Besant writes, and I quote, We had our first Adyar Day, according to Madame de Manziarli's suggestion. There was the usual meeting in the morning at 7.17, the moment at which the last breath passed from the president's body or ever the silver cord was loosed. At that, representatives of Hinduism, Zoroastrianism and Buddhism spoke of the great services done by him, that is Colonel Alcott, to their respective religions, the splendid record of his theosophical work. Unquote. Dr. Besant also reports about the starting of the Adyar archives, and I quote In the afternoon, thanks to Mr. C. Jinaraj Dasa, who has become the archive keeper of the society and is burrowing into all the old locked up boxes and bringing out treasures of the most varied kinds were arranged by a band of willing workers, a number of tables in the large hall of the society filled with mementos of the past, including some much prized articles belonging to the president founder and his great colleague, HVB. Unquote. On that special table were displayed some priceless objects. The turban worn by Ma the Maharshi Maurya when he visited the colonel in New York in 1877, leaving him his turban as a gift. The original manuscript of the secret doctrine sent over to Adyar by HPB from London, and numerous other articles of keen interest to Theosophists. Display on the other tables included objects given to the TS by members from many different lands, a paper calling for the quarterly meeting of the Matchmakers Union in London. Travels and keys galore, telling silently of buildings founded and opened for the TS and its kindred moments. And in the evening of the same day, there was a display of various articles collected by Brother Jinaraj Dasa in the Great Hall at Adyar. 
On this day, Dr. Besant also unveiled the lifelike portrait of Mr. A. P. Sinnott, whom she observed was, and I quote, for so long the vice president of the TS, and who was faithful in life and in death, unquote. The material available in the archives is of great value, precious and historically very important. Besides diaries and scrapbooks, the archival collection includes original letters, manuscripts, personal belongings, travel mementos, photographs, gifts, audio and video cassettes, etc. of various theosophical leaders. During the war years, due to the very real danger of destruction of archival material by bombing or falling into enemy hands, it was carefully packed into steel boxes and sent away to secret far-off places for safekeeping. Many archivists, beginning with the early years, since the formation of the TS have done amazing work by systematically organizing the huge pile of documents, papers, and other memorabilia, ensuring that the more fragile objects were carefully preserved for posterity. In fact, the present-day archives owes its position as a valuable repository of early TS history entirely due to their untiring and truly stupendous efforts. Both Colonel Alcott and Madame Blavatsky were collectors of all kinds of records and objects. Colonel Alcott, in particular, left behind many trunks full of papers and documents, apart from the many treasures, old parchments, palm leaf manuscripts, etc., which today occupy pride of place in the Adyar library. Mr. C. Jinaraj Dasa was a very keen historian and curator and the first systematic organization of the archival material happened under his supervision and guidance. He is credited with the discovery of the precious HPB scrapbook series, among other things. Mary K. Neff was an American theosophist who came to Adia during Dr. Besant's presidency. She worked in the archives for two years, from 1927 to 29, and did substantial work in cataloging the materials. She was the first to prepare a comprehensive index of HBB's scrapbooks. In addition, she also prepared a chronology of the Mahatma letters, which she developed by reference to Colonel Alcott's diaries. Mrs. Josephine Ransom used the archival material at Adyar for writing her much acclaimed book, A Short History of the Theosophical Society, which was first published in 1938. In the 1930s, A.J. Hammerster, a Dutch theosophist, renumbered the volumes of the scrapbooks. He wrote a series of articles in the theosophist called Leaves from the Archives in 1936. He brought to light some of the hidden treasures about the origin of the theosophical movement and facts about the founders. He wrote about Eliphas Levy the first edition of The Secret Doctrine, The History of the Theosophical Movement, etc., researching unknown pearls from the archive. Boris de Zirkov, a relative of Madame Blavatsky, lived in the Point Loma community for many years. He was the editor of H.P. Blavatsky's collected writings and included some materials from the scrapbooks of HBB from the archives. 
some of the archivists over the years. The archives remained closed for many years and was reopened in 2015 under the presidentship of Mr. Tim Boyd. A new team headed by Mrs. Kusum Satapati restarted the work at the archives. Mr. Isaac Hurley from Spain, Dr. T.P. Arganandam and I joined the department. Ms. Janet Krishna, archivist from Alcott, Wheaton visited and advised on setting up the archives again. See, Jinaraj Dasa contributed a great deal to the enrichment of the Adyar archives through his many travels around the world and his detailed knowledge of theosophical history. He discovered among the records of the TS much interesting material. The most important is the series of scrapbooks of HVB, beginning with that of 1874. These are referred to by Colonel Alcott in the old diary leaves. First page of the scrapbook. On this page, HVB has composed the humorously contrived title, Anti and Postnatal History of the Theosophical Society and the Tribulations, Mortifications and Triumphs of its Fellows. A fine example of the artistic, witty and prophetic aspects of HPB's nature. HPB's comments on the Cuttings pasted by her contain very valuable material revealing the inner guidance of the founders even before the TS was actually started. Her fascinating personality comes out in the witty and sometimes acid parenthesis scribbled in the scrap scrapbooks. Another interesting find is the first manuscript of the first volume of the Secret Doctrine in HBB's handwriting sent by her from Austin to T. Subarao in 1886. The Adyar archives contains an unpublished manuscript, Source of Measures or Art of Speech by Ralston Skinner, Cincinnati, Ohio, USA which was completed in February 1884. This was sent by him on 10th January 1887 to Madame Blavatsky at Austin. See, Jinaraj Dasa wrote about this book, work in The Theosophist of August 1923 and included a table of contents for the manuscripts. Another archival treasure is Henry Kundrat's Amphitheatrum Safientia Eterni. Published in 1595, it is one of the oldest books we have in the archives. This is an alchemical classic infused with a strange combination of Christianity and magic, illustrated with elaborate, hand colored, engraved plates, heightened with gold and silver. Archives contains Madame Blavatsky's personal collection of books. These volumes are precious as they also contain notes and comments by her. She used them for reference and some books have been autographed by her. Michael Gomes, while researching at the Adyar archives, carefully catalogued the collection. The Adyar archives and the Blavatsky Museum share a common platform. 
the archives largely comprises old documents and papers the museum contains paintings sculptures and other precious artifacts associated with early history of the society the museum owes its beginning Nicholas Rorick a great painter and spiritualist and more importantly a theosophist who in 1925 presented one of his masterpieces the messenger to the theosophical society at a function attended by a group of friends professor rorick unveiled the picture which was resting on an easel and said and i quote in this home of light let me present this picture of the messenger dedicated to helena petrovna blavatsky as the nucleus of a future blavatsky museum of arts whose motto shall be beauty is the garment of truth unquote thus was the seed planted for the starting of the museum among the many treasures in the museum are the two great doors of carved teak wood depicting the age old hindu story of evolution from fish to god gifted by prince hari singh ji of bhavnagar some of the museum artifact some precious articles in the museum precipitated phenomenally by hp in addition to the well documented treasures the adyar archives and blavatsky museum also contain other material extremely interesting though largely unknown about the founders and other early theosophists some examples are shown here during 1975 centenary convention a beautiful informative and interesting souvenir listing some of the important exhibits stored in the archives was published this included a reproduction of the first page of HPB's first scrapbook. The archives has a treasure trove of photographs of the founders, old theosophists, the estate, and various events which took place at Adya during the early days, including the many pioneering initiatives. which originated at adyar these are a visual delight as they bring to life many famous personalities and happenings of an earlier era
five ancient carved granite gateways known as the trilithons were brought by Colonel Olcott from a ruined temple in North Orca district in Tamil Nadu in 1905. Photographs showing the shifting of the first triliton to the present location in 1931. Ledbetter Chambers, first concrete building in India constructed in 1910. In Bharat Samaja, the Hindu temple, for the first time, the congregation also took part in the ceremony. Old pictures of Alcott School. Midday meal scheme was started in India for the first time ever at Alcott School when Colonel Alcott realized that many poor children attended the school on an empty stomach. At Alcott School, personal hygiene was taught to the children with teachers, scouts and guides, giving them bath, combing their hair, etc. Annie Besant started the Scout Movement in India and Dr. Arundale too contributed significantly. Scouts and Guides Group Photos The Kalakshetra Foundation started by Srimati Rukmini Devi in 1935 is dedicated to the preservation of traditional values in Indian art and crafts, especially in the field of Bharatanatyam dance. It was started in the Adyar Estate campus and later shifted to its present location in 1953. Srimati Radha Bernier, our former TS president, was one of the early students who learned dance from Srimati Rukmini Devi at the Kalakshetra Foundation. For many years during the convention, it has been the practice to have a themed exhibition, both at the museum and at the archives. The Great Banyan Audiovisual Center was launched with a view to sharing audiovisual material including old documentaries from the archives.
a short video of the Surendra Narayan archives at the new location. A short video from the oldest living archivist, David Dines from Australia. Ask you if you wanted to just tell me about uh, when you worked at Ajar in the archives and who you worked with. Well, I was very happy to work in in uh, the archives of Ajar uh, for the uh, the keeper of the archives, uh, Zoltan Diogo Pop who um, ha had been uh, a um, Hungarian general and uh, he'd gone to uh, to Adjar to uh, to work as a volunteer and uh, there he met uh, this um, uh, Peggy de Vogel van Gogh uh, who was also another volunteer from uh, from uh, Indonesia and um, uh, he was so so pleasant to work work with so, David, what what years were you actually working in the archives in Adjar? What, what, uh, what's the time frame? I remember frame? rightly, it was 1964, 1964 to, um, it was for almost three years, 64, 65, 66, 67, 67, we came back to Sydney so um, our daughter Felicity could be born. Um, Cecily wanted her doctor in, um, in Sydney. And uh, so we, we came back, but um, uh, she was very regretful. She loved Adjar. Yes. She did really you did. like... She, re she related, um, she got on so well with everybody. Thank you, David. I, I think that's probably uh, a, a good place to stop. Cheers. In the centenary year, there is a plan to convert the old school tapes comprising lectures by early theosophists into digital format in order to share this content with the interested members worldwide. It is also proposed to bring out a small book about life on the Adyar estate in the early days with a description of the various places of historical interest of which there are many on the estate. We are gathered together this evening to consider a doctrine which has been accepted as true by countless numbers of people from time immemorial. Grateful thanks to the International President, Mr. Tim Boyd, and the Convention Committee for giving me the space and time to make this presentation in the centenary year of the Aryar archives. Grateful thanks also to Brother Vinay Kumar Patri and Brother Anand for technical help and Sister Geeta Jaikumar for editorial assistance. Namaste.